It's to directly filter the outdoor air in repeated tests. Some of the materials found include the repeated presence of unusual filaments, a gel formation, crystals, and powders. Extraordinary levels of particulate materials have been directly observed and recorded using simple methods discovered by citizens across the country. These methods include the corona of the sun and extremely powerful lamps. Caution with the solar method is especially advised. These observations have been taken under the most ideal weather and air quality conditions, and they nevertheless provide alarming and direct evidence of the substantial changes that have occurred in our atmosphere. Rainwater samples have been distilled to concentrate any solid materials or particulates. Metallic-based materials are evident upon observation. Unusual airborne filament samples have been collected from a variety of locations across the nation, as well as the globe. These fibers are highly unusual in their properties, and any claims of being simply spider webs cannot be substantiated. Samples of these fibers have been sent directly to the Administrator of the United States Environmental Protection Agency. Subsequent observation of these fibers under the microscope produces disturbing results, including the occurrence of unusual biological components. The United States EPA has refused to identify these fibers. Incredibly high mold counts have been found within repeated outdoor samples that have been taken. This result is in spite of the fact that the tests were conducted in an extremely arid environment in the high southwest of the United States. This arid environment has been further aggravated by extended drought conditions over the past several years, also a topic to be discussed further. It is a fact that particulate matter in the atmosphere acts as a transport mechanism, or delivery system, for other materials, including biological materials that can piggyback onto the solid materials. This is in addition to the health risk, including respiratory illness and increased mortality that result from higher levels of particulate matter in the air. It is also a fact that must be reported, despite the disturbing and alarming implications that unusual and unexpected biological components have been repeatedly identified in a variety of atmospheric samples across a wide geographic area using a variety of techniques. The fibrous material sent to the United States EPA is especially unsettling, as it was later shown to contain biological components under the review of a medical professional. For those who might think that biological aerosols have no precedent, it might be worthwhile to read carefully the documented U.S. Senate hearings held in 1977 entitled Examination of Serious Deficiencies in the Defense Department's Effort to Protect the Human Subjects of Drug Research, along with the contractors that are enumerated within that report. A variety of electromagnetic devices have been developed and used, this investigation has resulted from the plausible hypothesis that the atmosphere has now been modified into what is called a plasma state, or an electrified gas. Testing has produced a variety of indications that this hypothesis is indeed correct, and that the atmosphere is regularly being used for electromagnetic applications. ELF energy is of special concern because of its direct connection to the health aspects of the electromagnetic nature of human beings. Artificial pulse energy appears to now have been detected on a variety of occasions, and evidence indicates that it is now a part of our unseen environment. Electrolysis methods have further confirmed the existence of unexpected ionizing metallic salts within our atmosphere. Radar anomalies also continue to point to the presence of an altered electromagnetic environment. The testing and sampling methods and results that you have just witnessed are necessary due to the abject failure of the public environmental authorities to respond appropriately to the many requests for investigation that have been made by countless citizens. The responses of the so-called officials and authorities has already become painfully apparent.
was the jets running stuff in the air. I went outside, I looked out, it was in the morning, and lo and behold, there was, you know, what I thought were contrails, a, a numerous jet spraying, probably four or five jets. The contrails were not dissipating, they continued in the air, and I watched, actually I, I was horrified, because I'd never seen anything like this before, as it continued all day long. And the result was, within a couple hours, the entire sky was totally blotted out with this messy white haze. I started documenting after I discovered that nobody was paying attention, and that even people who would look up and acknowledge that they see the same thing, they weren't at all concerned about it. They didn't think that it was anything of importance. And I, having, when I moved to Santa Fe, one of the things that, um, one of the reasons I moved here was because of the sun and the beautiful sky that they had here. And I've been somebody who's always watched the sky. And the, the sky here was deep blue and beautiful, and it was something that gave me energy. It was just something that just elevated my spirit every time I saw it, no matter how bad my day was going. If I could get outside and see that beautiful sky and those big fluffy white clouds, I, everything was okay. And so I um, saw this being taken away, basically. And I didn't know what was going on, and I didn't, uh, I, I, I didn't know who was doing it or why it was doing or why it was being done. And I still don't know. But I do know. But what I do know is that it is being done, and it wasn't natural. The, the jets would come, and I know enough. Of, you know, I have a I have a degree in science. I have a doctorate in science, so I consider myself to be maybe not a, an expert in, in, in this particular thing, but I know how to look at things. And I know that, you know, that if, if you pass natural sunlight through a substance and it gives off a color, it usually identifies that substance. There's no two substances that give the same color in solution. So I knew that I was looking at something that was other than water because that would have made uh, what we know as a rainbow. It would have pretty evenly distributed bands of color all along the, s the spectrum. Well, I beca because, because I was trying to convince people that it was actually happening and it wasn't normal, I began to try to see things that I could point out to the sky while I was with them to say, well, look at this. How do you explain this? And I learned a little bit about meteorology and uh, can, you know the atmospheric conditions necessary for even a, a, a contrail to form and persist, much less ones that just dissipate and, and, and found that there were no laws of physics that supported this activity, or the explanation of this activity as a normal water vapor or frozen vapor trail. And so I came up with things like, well, there, you know, all of a sudden, you know, the jet goes overhead, and, 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 and in the same sky, you'll see two or three jets passing overhead, and there's nothing. You can barely see the jets because they're so high up. And other jets uh, come into an area, and, they, and all of a sudden, uh, the, the white trail starts all of a sudden coming out of the jet, and then it stops, and then it starts again. And I've seen a number of occasions where they just did dashes across the sky. And I stops and, and starts. I talked to a few pilots, and I asked them, well, how can you do this? And, and, and they, first of all, they did not believe that anything untoward was happening. And they said, well, you can turn your engine off. I said, would you do it over and over again? He says, if you're nuts, the sky's gone from uh, a, a deep blue to kind of a, a silvery white with a little hint of blue in it. Even on the best days, when, when you don't see a lot of activity overhead for even a week, um, it never comes close to the deep blue it used to be. And I started noticing, especially in 90, in, in, uh, by March of 99, April of 99, uh, people were becoming very, very ill. At the time, I was working in a healthcare facility, and I was seeing uh, a lot of upper respiratory disease happen. Uh, and over the years, I've watched more and more people come down with asthma. And you can hear it. You go to the supermarket and you find children, you know, children that are two and three years old, and, they're, and, and you can hear them wheezing.